Welcome to the JMark Business Innovation Technology Experience. In today's episode, we're going to talk about making the right moves and preparing your organization for risk in 2021. A few things we'll cover are having a multi-layered approach to security. So for example, you need things like antivirus and security monitoring tools in place. But beyond that, there's also the human element. So you need to make sure your employees are trained. And then beyond that, of course, is insurance in case something does happen. We also talk about budget. With all the risk, technology does need to be a main part of your budget. And then it's not if, it's when. In today's world, your company will be attacked. That's just the world that we live in today. So since it will happen, you need to make sure you're prepared. Okay, let's get started. Welcome everybody to the Business Innovation Technology Experience. We're excited to have Richard Aulis from Aulis Acres and Arnie uh, with us this morning. uh, We find ourselves at the tail end of a tumultuous year, uh, 2020. And uh, the topic for today is about uh, preparing for risks in 2021. You know, I think that, I don't think anybody could have predicted, uh, you know, some of the potential risks uh, that, that have occurred in 2020. The, you know, everybody always approaches their planning, you know, thinking about back of disaster recovery and thinking about, you know, insurance and cybersecurity insurance and, and, and all the different risks in, in an organization. But oftentimes it's, it's like from a distance and people don't realize that it really is something that is happening right now and happening with people. And the, what we've seen in 2020, uh, I think one of the big lessons that we can, we can take is that it can happen at any time to anybody whether that is a natural disaster, whether that is a security event, whether that is a, um, a you know, whatever, there's, there's a million different scenarios that we could go over. And so, um, you know, in looking forward towards 2021, you know, I, I think we all agree that we have to take a, a stance of, of caution, so to speak. You know, we've talked a lot about innovation, but at the same point, you can't innovate if you're not protected. And so looking forward into 2021, uh, Richard, what do you see as some of the things that business owners, you know, what are the top things that business owners really need to look at to make sure that they are set up for success uh, for for the new year? Well, first of all, you're exactly right that uh, 2020 brought on some <laughs> some risks and some changes that I, I think none of us were really planning on and, and, and prepared for. I will say a couple of things, particularly as we get into technology, we have seen the, uh, the, the explosion of remote work uh, where, um, and, and I'll just give an example of us personally, we were Fortunately, we were preparing for uh, providing remote work to our staff. And so we had all the technology uh, purchased and in place. Uh, We had uh, changed over our phone system where we can operate that remotely. And this was not in preparation (laughs) for the pandemic. It It was really to provide more flexibility to our staff. Well, well, fortunately, we'd done all this and we were preparing to offer our staff one day a week of remote work if, if their job position uh, would allow for it. And then we hit the pandemic. And what has happened, not only to our business, but many businesses that can provide work, remote work, is we figured out that, that you, you, you can be productive, sometimes even more productive. Uh, working remotely, whether it be at home or from another location. And so, um, and, and just like we're on this call today uh, and, and we're uh, doing this remotely, I think a year ago, although we might have done a little bit of this, I bet you we'd have been in a studio and we'd have been uh, having this conversation differently than we are now. And so, I only say that to tee up our conversation to say that not only is technology an important part of what we all now do, it is going to become, you know, 
it, it's going to have exponential growth as we continue moving forward in our businesses. And so I look back on my career and it used to be back in the, what I'd call the old days when I first got started, we were concerned about, about buildings and about the contents in those buildings and those types of things. And we still are, but, Far, far more importantly, we are concerned about technology exposures, uh, what, what technology can do, and frankly, the risks, which I'm sure we'll get into, that they create. And so I would just say that the risks associated with technology are growing because of the exponential use of technology that has been brought on by this pandemic. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, the, the migration of workloads to a distributed workforce has been, has been dramatic and it's been necessary. But as you, as you mentioned, that also has brought about new risks that not only have, not only has the distribution of work and of data created more risks, but it's provided an opportunity for hackers to exploit that. And so, you know, when we say, or when you hear this word exponential about security risks in 2020, I, I'm not even sure that word is big enough. I'm, Dax, you'll have to help me with the wordsmithing, but it, it is, if you look at a graph of, of the security incidents since the beginning of 2020 versus now, it, it looks like 2019 was a walk in the park. And, and with, you know, with the distributed workforce, we see, like you said, you know, people are beginning to, to embrace it. They're embracing being able to have the flexibility. They're embracing being able to um, be able to, you know, have, have more freedom and, and get work done. And, and a lot of people are seeing more productivity and all of the, uh, the stats are showing that people working from home are, are more productive for the most part. But that doesn't mean we can't, we, we shouldn't prepare for the risks. And, you know, as we've talked about on, uh, on other episodes, you know, we have to adapt, we have to innovate, we have to, you know, provide solutions, of course, for our employees. But at the same point, if we get knocked in the head, because we didn't take care of a risk, then all of that innovation, all of that great planning is going to not do any good. And so, you know, apart from the, the IT side and the technology side of securing an organization, you know, what do business owners need to, need to make sure they have in place to, to, uh, to protect their, their organization? Uh, you know, a couple of things. One is, is really trying to nail down how you're going to use technology, number one. In, in other words, are you going to deploy it from a remote workforce standpoint? Do you have VPN in place? Are all your people set up on not only uh, Wi-Fi, but secure Wi-Fi uh, within their homes or wherever they're working from? And then and then probably as importantly, what we've learned is that, you know, at work, I'm really used to being, if I'm sitting at my desk, I'm used to being uh, fairly diligent about security issues. As I deployed home, I kind of lost track of the fact that I, I'm still at work here, right? And I need to make sure I continue to be diligent in, in how I'm approaching security because I can be lured into a kind of my, my home life where I'm probably not quite as diligent as it comes to security. And what we're seeing, and, and again, it's, it's the, the growth has, has been explosive, it is all of these uh, emails and websites and things that try to trick you into clicking on links and attachments and providing information and, and all of those various things have, have really increased and are, are frankly breaking through uh, our, our, our blockers and our firewalls and, and so forth. And uh, they're, they're figuring out ways to, to get around that. So you've, I really think that, 
that again, it's not only having the proper equipment, including firewalls, including security and all of those things in place. It's also having, having the right, not only mindset, but right training for your staff so that they know what to look for, what to look out for, how to operate their equipment, how to get on VPN in an effective way, and all those various things. And then I'm sure we'll talk about this, and I'm talking a lot of risk management here, but then on the back end of it is making you ha- sure you have the proper insurance policies in place to protect you in the event that something does happen and does break through. Yeah, that's what we talk about all the time is that your employees are the biggest risk and training is so hugely important. And I actually educate my family all the time. Like I talk to them about it. They've never even heard of the word ransomware. And I'm like, this is very real and scary. And I know I hadn't heard of any of this stuff until J Mark and it's mind blowing. It's terrifying. This is the most important thing in my opinion you can do right now is educate and train every employee. I, I absolutely agree with that, and I think it's it's the human side of things uh, as to where many things get compromised, and that training is so, so important. And what we're essentially talking about here is a, a multi-layered approach to security. A lot of times when you look at, look at security, you'll have a technology person come in and go, okay, well, we need to do this, 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 and it's all related to the technology. There's a ton of items related to the technology from, you know, the, the antivirus on the computer, the patch management uh, policies, uh, you know, the VPNs and, and, and all the different kind of security monitoring tools. But then this other layer, like you both mentioned, is, is employees. Uh, making sure that they're trained. And then you have, you know, below that, or maybe above, however you want to phrase it, you know, there's there's the insurance just in case something happens. But but a lot of people too get insurance and don't take the time to spend, they, they may not even put enough into their policy and they don't put enough effort into securing the organization from the technology side or the employee um, education side. And they, they are looking at their insurance as a, as a, uh, uh, just a backup save me. You know, I, I don't need to invest in technology because I have this insurance policy. What, would you ha- what, what are some of the numbers that people need to realize in terms of protecting themselves and some of the gotchas that they need to realize in terms of if, if something does happen from a security standpoint or disaster standpoint, that people may not be, be protected as much as they think? Yeah, well, the, the thing I would say first and foremost is, is that insurance is, is really important and analyzing the insurance policy to make sure it fits your needs is very important. But frankly, in the event of something happening, that is really only going to protect some of the financial risk or financial damage that has occurred. If you think about all the, the downtime and all the time that might have to be spent dealing with some type of breach or private information hitting the marketplace and and as importantly reputational damage right if 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 our company is out out in front and in the news about a significant event happening that that really does damage to our reputation as a company. And so, although insurance is very, very important, it's always our preference to make sure that we try to have policies, procedures, and protocols in place to really minimize this risk before it ever hit an insurance policy. And then again, the insurance policy it will cover financial damage, but there are going to be many things that businesses deal with that, that they're, they're going to be dealing with outside the insurance contract. Yeah. So I, I think that, you know, when we talk about employee education, there's also the, the idea of employer education or sorts, you know, really understanding the in and outs of the insurance policy. I mean, when a security event occurs, 
there are uh, legal ramifications that may or may not be covered un under your insurance. There are forensic and analysis uh, costs that may not be covered under your insurance. There are, like you said, the reputation. I mean, how can you put a price on that? Especially now when people are trying to innovate, they're trying to move fast, they're trying to grow their organizations despite all of the challenges that are occurring and then bam, you get a blow of uh, something stupid like that happening. Um, and, and so there's all these things that, that, that we really have to look into. And I don't know, is it, is it, do you, do you see that the insurance is a, is a strategy or is, is the insurance, um, more of a, uh, a gotcha, so to speak, a, a backup plan? You know, I, I think insurance is part of the strategy. How, however, it, it, it is only, and I really can't express this strongly enough, it's only part of a strategy. Um, and the reason I say it's part of a strategy is because there are provisions within that policy that you may need to adjust and tweak based on your specific needs and based on your client base and or vendors that you're interacting with on a regular basis. But as you put that aside, I really think something that is, I, I was gonna say as important, but I'd say more important, is the policies, procedures, protocol, and the training that we talked about with, with your, your staff and, and frankly having your equipment up to date and protected and your network protected, those things are, are exceptionally important. So there's that, there's that front end work that we just talked about with, with all of that. And then what I call the back end work, and that's the insurance policy. And then what you do in the event of a loss. And, and part of that policy normally is access to a technology attorney and a breach coach in the event that something should happen to you, they, they are there to try to help walk you through the necessary steps to get you hopefully back to, back to normal. And so, uh, so again, it, it's really, I think, Todd, in concert with one another that, that those things work together. Yeah, I think that's the, you know, the, the word that keeps occurring to me is proactive. You need to have a proactive approach to, to managing and mitigating your risk because the, the fact is the world we live in today, we talk about this all the time at JMark, it's not a matter of if you will have some sort of cybersecurity breach, it's a matter of when and it's a matter of the, the damage that occurs on the tail end of that afterward and, and how you manage that damage and, and reduce it is by doing all the things that you're talking about, Richard, is having these processes in place, having the, the insurance for the financial part of it, but having the advisors on every end and you know having the backup plan, having a plan to restore. We talk about this so often at JMark, it's not just about the backup, it's about how you can re restore your uh, data and all of that stuff and get back to work as quickly as possible, mitigate the, the damage to your reputation. And all of these things are things that you need to be thinking about beforehand. Again, being proactive so that when it does happen, you already have everything in place in order to weather that particular storm as smoothly as possible. Yeah. I, I agree 100%, and something I'll add to that is, is that backup, we've seen some real horror stories with, with backups of companies trying to access those backups only to find out that, number one, they're, they're not there or, or it hasn't been backing up because they haven't tested it. Number two, in an ideal world, you'd have some type of a backup that would be offline, right, off network, uh, because these... <laughs> These bad people are getting really, really uh, smart, and they are. If if they can get on your network, then they're accessing the backup, and in some cases, for lack of a better word, taking it away from you. And so, 
then you go to try to access that backup and it's not there. And then just, just as Christina said, then, then the ransomware demand comes, comes forth and you don't have a, an adequate backup and guess what happens then? You're, you're, you're really in, in tough shape uh, from, from negotiating with these bad guys. So uh, like you said, Dax, that, that, that effort to be proactive, I think is just critical. I think it's important too, to remember that when people see the news about organizations uh, that are facing these attacks, you know, we see in the news, the big stuff, you know, we see the FireEye, uh, you know, they're a big security organization. Um, we see the national treasury and, and different things that have been affected. And these are like, wow. And, you know, one way to look at it is, you know, those are big companies, you know, they have money, they have, uh, they have lots of technology and, and they were still hacked. But another way to look at it is those are big companies and hackers are only interested in them. Well, the, the truth though, is that we, you don't see a lot of the smaller companies in the business because they don't have the financial reserves. They don't have the backup uh, systems that are that are that are done correctly in an off uh, offsite or off uh, disconnected immutable it's called uh, uh, system they don't have the the proper insurance policies and and even not in any way to put down insurance but if you have a small business and your entire network is compromised and they are um, the hackers are uh, you know requesting and and huge amount of money that you can't pay business goes under we've seen businesses small businesses that have have fallen victim to this and and i don't like talking about these things from because i don't i don't like the idea of spreading fear for the sake of fear but going in you know with the year we've had in 2020 going into 2021 we have to recognize as dak said that it's not if, it's when. And it doesn't matter if you're big, if you're small, uh, what location of the country you're in, if you're distributed in your office, if you're hybrid, if you're in the cloud, if you're not in the cloud, there the attack vectors are, are all over. And that's why oftentimes it comes back to the multi-level approach of all the different things. And it goes back to um, you know making sure you have a backup system that can actually restore your data in case you can't pay that ransomware ransom, or you can't uh, uh, can't clean up the, the systems, um, you know, think about the data that you would lose in that kind of scenario. And that's where you start realizing that there's a change in strategy needed. I, I think, like it or not, whether you're a large or a small business, the the fact that your technology budget is growing is 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 just a fact of being in, in, in business now. And when I say that, I just mean that, you know, having your, both your equipment up to date, your, your network and its security up to date, um, your remote, uh, workforce, uh, being able to be deployed and secure the, the proper training as we've talked about, and then the proper insurance policy to protect that technology and all the data that you have are things that are that are just part of the game if you wanna if you wanna be in business and and I, I don't I don't necessarily like it you know I I've been in business thirty years and our technology budget has gone from what used to be a minuscule budget to where it's now a big part of our operation but at the same time it allows us to be more productive it allows us to add flexibility to our culture. It allows us to be able to operate 24 seven. It'll, you know, it allows us uh, even through this pandemic to, to be, uh, to provide uninterrupted service to our clients. And so um, the, the bottom line is, is that technology has, has grown and is now, I believe, one of the top three things that a business has to have a plan around, has to be proactive about, and has to think about, uh, kind of like we talked about earlier through this pandemic about how we're going to use it effectively. Uh, and uh, 
and, and, and so having a plan around it, being proactive and training your staff are, are exceptionally important. Yeah, I think, and I think that's, that's exactly, uh, you took a lot of the words out of my mouth there, Richard, with speaking about how there's the, the good and the bad of, of technology. There is more risk now or, or different risks that we, that business owners have to weigh because of the technology, but there are all of the advantages that technology bring us in the way that we can work and what we can get done. Um, and, and so accepting that is accepting that, that managing the risk is, needs to be part of your strategy, part of your business strategy, part of your business plan, part of something that you take into account every step of the way. Uh, you know, I'd be interested to hear Todd and Richard, your thoughts on, on the idea that, you know, one thing that occurs to me with risk like this is that people, I think most people have a really hard time taking a lot of this stuff seriously if it doesn't seem real to them because it hasn't happened to them yet. And, and it's hard to get people to take something seriously when you when you don't really have a concept of it, when it seems like it's something that could happen to the other guy, even if you know it's real, it's like, well, that that could happen to the other guy. So how do we how do how do we get business owners to do this to to have that healthy fear that Todd spoke about, and not the debilitating fear where where it's too overwhelming, you don't want to act. Yeah, Dax, that's a that's a great question. Here's, here's how I would try to answer that is, is one, I don't think you ever learn as acutely as when it happens to you, right? Like, like you said, that's how we all, you know, we've all heard the phrase, you know, I've, I've learned by my mistakes and I've made a lot of them over the years. And, and but however, you, you know, working with really good advisors for your business and, and frankly, the business I'm in, in risk management and insurance, uh, a, a really good advisor can bring you examples and, 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 and solutions and strategies on, on those various risks that you're talking about. And so learning from others, even though it hadn't happened to you, I think is a, is a, is a way that that many businesses can do that. I'd, I'd add one thing uh, before Todd jumps in, and that is we believe in making conscious decisions. And what I mean by that is all these areas that we've been discussing here is I'm okay with not buying an insurance policy if that was a conscious decision that that, that, that the, the leaders of that business considered, weighed the options, and decided not to. But what pains me is when we don't make a decision, right, and we are then bludgeoned by some event, and it's not because we've made a conscious decision, it's because we have not made a decision that, that we're blindsided and, uh, and worse financially devastated. Yeah, I think that, you know, and one of the things that comes to my mind is, you know, going back to what you were talking about in terms of the budget, Richard, business has changed over the last 30 years. Everything is technology. You want to innovate? Technology is going to be involved. You want to reduce costs? Technology is going to be involved. You want to grow the organization, increase profits? Technology is going to be involved. You, you, whatever you want to do, create better customer service, improve productivity, uh, reduce risk, technology is going to be involved. So we see the IT budget, yes, is increasing. And this kind of goes into what we've been talking about, but it's also increasing because business has shifted from whatever their business in to being a technology business. That's kind of what we've been talking about. Technology runs business. And so when you look at it from that standpoint, you, when you look at it, <clears throat> that technology is, is a, a part of your team, so to speak, and is contributing to all of these different initiatives in your organization, you look at that and go, well, okay, yes, my risks have increased because I'm, technology is more, uh, 
more intertwined with everything, but also it's producing more. You know, technology is increasing productivity. It's increasing the amount of work we can do. It's increasing our connectivity and increasing, improving our morale and, and diff different things. And, it, you know, so, so I, I kind of, when people think about technology as an expense and think about cybersecurity policies or back when disaster recovery plan or security systems in the organization, I, I don't, this idea of like, it's an expense that I, I have to do or a necessary evil that I have to do is the entirely wrong approach in 2020 and 2021. Because technology now is a main part of the budget. It's what moves our organizations forward. And we have to start considering it as an asset that can, can help our organizations. And along with any asset, we want to reduce the loss of that asset. We want to make sure that we don't, we don't, as you say, legend ourselves. <laughs> I think that's going to be my new favorite word. <laughs> well, I, I agree with that. And think about all the, the, the things that we've learned through the pandemic. And I, I think there's some real learning experiences. We, we have three offices and we used to travel quite a bit between offices. And uh, during the pandemic, obviously we weren't traveling as much and we've used video conferencing and we've learned how to use it effectively which is a real key. And, and because of that, we've reduced our travel time. We have increased our productivity. Uh, also, we meet with clients over, over video where we used to have to travel out to see them. And we used to print lots of material where now we're sharing screens and providing that via attachments and email. And so there are and, and, and also people are not commuting as much because some are, are working remotely. And so there, there are a lot of things that I think we've learned through this, through this experience that we've all had where we can use technology more effectively, be more productive. And, and frankly, obviously, I miss uh, seeing people in person and we will get back to that. But I, I'm also convinced that we'll be using a lot more technology in the future once we get past this pandemic that, that will enable us to be more productive, more efficient, and frankly, more profitable. I think, uh, I think that's a good point that technology is, you know, where we're obviously acknowledging the fact that technology helps create these risks because it's it's so widespread and used in every every aspect of business today, every workflow. But also, you know, technology is the answer to a lot of these problems, both from the IT stance and I also think from the uh, insurance side of things. That you know, I'm sure you, Richard, over the past uh, I think you said 30 years of your career have seen the use of technology to deliver better insurance products to people. You have reams of data that you can use to uh, pinpoint where you can help people better and, and how you can deliver better products to, to different industries and different businesses and, and make sure to protect them better in a way that you probably couldn't do a couple of decades ago because of technology, because that's so available and same thing on the IT end that we're able to deliver solutions to some of these risks and to, um, to, to weaknesses in, in people's, in, in businesses, uh, networks and stuff and, and, and shore up vulnerabilities much quicker and respond much more rapidly because we have the technologies to do that uh, remotely and to, to um, proactively uh, and uh, automate updates and that kind of thing to make sure that these things are happening. So I think that's the other, you know, the blessing side of technology is that it also makes us able to, every business able to be more agile and, and respond better in a way that couldn't happen in the past. Yeah, I don't think there's any question that it's, it's increased uh, speed uh, to a whole new level as far as providing effective service and material. The benchmarking and data 
that we now have available to us is is light years <laughs> ahead of where it used to be just a few years ago. And we're able to, to analyze risk far more effectively and then deploy resources and solutions to that more quickly and more readily. So you're, you are exactly right. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really, I, I think the, the real trick though is, is figuring out you, 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 people still want and, and frankly need a, a human being to understand their situation to that, that they understand cares about them and, and, and knows them and their, their business or their situation. And then they use the tools, right. That they have with technology. And so it, it's about that balance of using human capital and, and, and their expertise and experience and knowledge and caring uh, along with that technology. I think that's where the magic happens. And it's about, it's about finding that right blend to deliver to uh, the client and the relationship that you're in. I think that's, uh, that's perfect. The, you know, our, our motto, so to speak, is people first, technology second. And, and that exactly exemplifies uh, why, we, uh, why we have that. The, the other thing that I want to bring up before uh, we leave is, in terms of risks for 2021, is the risks outside of technology. You know, we've seen a lot of uh, organizations affected throughout the country with um, natural disasters. The hurricane mm -hmm. season was the biggest in, in, in history. Uh, tornadoes, DAX had an earthquake. Uh, <laughs> there's, like, there's something everywhere. Um, you know, there are a ton of things that have to happen. And going back to really what you were saying, Richard, this idea of taking care of people, when an organization truly has their technology set up for, te for, for flexibility, like you talked about, for, um, and has a you know, back of disaster recovery plan that they understand and know, they have the policies in place, they have the training in place. When there is a disaster, that's exactly what you're doing. You're taking care of your people because you are essentially working in a new location possibly, or you're adapting to whatever the situation is. But in terms of, you know, in terms of disasters um, and, and some of these other things that are kind of maybe outside of the realm of technology, uh, but that technology still maybe could help, what, what are some of these things that we can do, that business owners can do to protect themselves and be prepared for whatever might happen in, uh, in, in 2021? You know, great, a great question. And as, as, as you just pointed out, the world has changed and is changing. Um, property and the protection of property has become far more challenging with the volatile weather that we've been having, whether it be, and you mentioned it, wildfires, right? Hurricanes. And even um, riots. Er earthquakes, riots, uh, all those various things. So a couple, couple things. Number one, the make sure you have a good handle on what it would cost to replace your property. And I will tell you that it's just an age old mistake of thinking my property's worth what I can sell it for. You know, that's true if you're selling it, but if you're not selling it, you're going to need to repair or replace it. And that value is far different typically than what you can sell it for. And so the cost of construction has, has gone up over the past decade significantly. And to, to build a home today, uh, let alone a business type of structure, a commercial building, those, those costs associated with that are, are significantly different. And so I would really uh, encourage all of our of our watchers and listeners to make sure they have a good handle on what it would cost to replace their property. So that's that's one thing, a great risk management strategy. 
Another is, is, is what we talked about in the way of policies and procedures, but I'll, I'll take that and move it from technology into human resources and employment. We are seeing significant changes in employment law and the litigation associated with employment matters. And so making sure that you have an up-to-date handbook, the right policies and procedures in place, and more importantly, that you have your managers and your, and your people trained up on, on how to execute these policies and procedures. And then the last thing I'll leave us with, just because I, I, I knew this throughout my career, but boy, did it really hit home during this, this pandemic. And that is, is making sure that you're building an effective team in your business. Because if you have an effective team and something goes wrong, I promise you, <laughs> you are going to be in far better shape to execute a disaster recovery plan, to, to, just, to just have all hands on deck helping you. Uh, as you as you recover or or try to deal with whatever the situation is, and so I can't express enough that that is a constant, constant effort uh, that every business should go through of of building and perpetuating. You know that succession planning is something that. I don't think we all do enough of and think enough about. And, and, and that is something that is so critical to a business. And, and frankly, if you think about a, a long-term team player that has been with a business that, that knows your clients, that, that knows your systems, that, that knows your industry, re replacing or training up someone to take their place when they eventually exit from the company is exceptionally important. So this, this idea of succession planning. So I'd say property values, very important. Employment types and HR situation, exceptionally important. And then building and, and perpetuating a team, exceptionally important. So those are the three things that I would point out in addition to the technology, Todd, that we talked about today. Great. The, you know, hard to follow up on, on all that. And I think Christina is going to have trouble <laughs> narrowing her list down to three. <laughs> but the, uh, the one thing I did want to touch up, touch on, because we haven't talked about this much, is you've mentioned policies several times. And, and it occurred to me that you know, J-Mark has gone through a, a maturity over the years with policies, as, as I assume most organizations. And when we implemented policies at the beginning, you know, it was to uh, it was to implement the controls of the organization. You know, policies are meant to state the controls of the organization. For example, we have a policy that states that, um, you know, uh, we will have a backup and disaster recovery plan. The policy states that that backup and disaster recovery plan must be updated uh, annually. It states that uh, we have uh, certain information that has to be stored and archived for up to seven years. And, and these are the controls that all of the technology, the people, the processes um, follow. And what I, what, I, what I found that I thought was really interesting that I haven't put much thought to is at the beginning, when we rolled out policies to all the employees, uh, you know, it was like, oh, another thing I got to read, another thing I got to read. And it wasn't until this year that there was a meeting and, and our, we have a, a team called the Culture Crew that talks about culture issues. And this, I, the policies came up and everybody was grateful for the policies. Mm. They enjoyed reading the policies. And... I think that the maturity of the organization has come to the point where people want clarity. People want to understand, you know, what they, what they need to do, um, how to do it. And, 
And that's why policies are so important because they cover all of the controls of the organization. What happens, you know, with your back disaster recovery? What happens with your security? What's required of, you know, if something were to happen uh, to a lost computer or, you know, what's your BYOD policies and, and, and remote policies and all of these things, they drive clarity. It's not about like, about a, you know, just a hard hammer and, you know, rules here, rules there, rules everywhere. It's about providing clarity to the organization. And that provides, uh, clarity provides peace. Clarity provides um, assurance. And clarity in that sense improves productivity. It include, improves loyalty to the organization and improves the, the way people work together in the organization. And, and I just didn't want to, you know, you mentioned that several times and, and we've kind of glossed over it, but I, I wanted to mention that because it's so interrelated to all of the different things we've been talking about. What a, what a, what a great point. And, and I'll, I'll just add to it just briefly to say that, you know, your policies also can create and help create your culture. And I'll give you a couple examples. It doesn't have to be all this heavy handed, these are the rules kind of thing. In the pandemic, we discovered that many of our people were not using their vacation because they couldn't really go anywhere. And so we instituted a policy where they're able to roll over uh, their some of their vacation time to the following year to make it easier and more flexible for them. We also changed our flexible work arrangement policy during the pandemic to allow for more flexibility. Um, and, and, then, and then we instituted a more robust short-term disability program during this process as well. So kind of like you say, Todd, you know, policies, they do provide clarity. They do set some rules but you can also use them to tweak your culture, making it, uh, frankly, making you an employer of choice, a better place to work, and providing more flexibility for your staff. And so, again, it's that, it's that balance, right, of, of, of having the, the, the right protocols in place to not only protect the company, but give the, give the staff and the, and, and, the, and the partners that you work with a, a better place to work and, and a, a more meaningful uh, experience. You know, and in thinking about everything we've talked about during during this episode, it, it kind of occurs to me that if I had to summarize everything into a single strategy, it would be agility. Hmm. You know, I read an article yesterday that talked about how with everything that's happened in 2020, we have to have a, still have to have a long-term strategy, but we have to somewhat embrace, what do they say, shorted, shortedness or something like that, with, with the idea that, you know, how do we go into 2020 and be agile? If this hits us, how can we move forward? If this hits us, how do we move forward? If this hits us, how do we move forward? That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about doom and gloom. We're being real about the risks that are out there. And when you're considering your strategy, you know, it's, it's all about flexibility. Like you've mentioned several times, Richard, it's about that agility. It's about how do we keep working? How do we keep moving forward, taking small steps if necessary and help our organizations be successful and meet our customers where they are. But, it, it, you know, reducing risks in 2021, I think, is going to start with the idea, at least the theme of how do we maintain and improve agility in our organizations? I, I think that's great. And I think some of the things that we talked about today allow you to be agile, right? If you've got the right technology, if you've got the right policies and procedures and you have the right team, that allows you to be agile. If you don't have those things in place, it's much, much more difficult to be agile. Okay, so I'm going to wrap it up today. Like Todd said, I could have chosen a lot of words to encompass what we talked about, but I narrowed it down to three. So first thing is multi-layered approach to security. So there are pretty much three different pieces to it that we talked about. The first piece are the things like 
VPN, patch management, antivirus, those kind of things. But then beyond that, it's the human element. So making sure that all your employees are trained, know what to look for, things like that. And then beyond that, there's the insurance. So in case something does get through those cracks, you have the insurance in place. Um, all pieces are vital. You can't just have one. Next word I chose is budget. So with all of the risk in the world today, technology and insurance need to be a main part of your budget. Um, they're not just another line item expense like a lot of other things. Like I think Richard mentioned, it's a fact that your technology budget should be growing. And I think Todd mentioned technology runs your business today, no matter what industry you're in. And then last, this is something I think Dax mentioned, which is it's not if anymore, it's when. So in today's world, your company will be attacked, period, in some way, shape, or form. Doesn't matter size, location, if you're hybrid, anything of that nature, it's not if, it's when. So it's extra important to make sure all of these things are in place. So thank you so much, Richard, for joining us today. It was my pleasure, and uh, I look forward to doing this again sometime. Sounds good. good. All right. Take care. Thank you for attending this podcast. We hope it has been informative and helped convey that at JMark, we are people first and technology second. To learn more and discover additional content relevant to your business, please visit us online at jmark.com or at LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You may also call us at 844-44-JMARK. Thank you for your time, and we look forward to seeing you again.